Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome! Yeah, this new streaming setup is not working well for me. Alright, so... The main objective is to find me some piggies, maybe pick off some pheasants, try a little something different, try to use a bow with it. Um... You know, things don't work as planned. I'll just work my way down south, and I've got a goose blind set up, and we'll throw down on some gooseies. But I think what I'll do is I'll start off and head over towards this tower, because usually this field is pretty good for, for hogs. These aren't bad either. Usually the, the fields... I'll start here, usually, and I can walk here and back down, and by then I've, I've already killed more than an hour and lots of piggies. So... That's the main objective. Got my faithful pooch. Quick trip into the lodge. Um, Casa de Bifalo. Give me a nice cup of coffee, some sweet tea, and some Mountain Dew. Enough caffeine to kill a moose, which I don't have yet. Oh, hello. Um, so yeah, this was... Uh, wasn't my, you know, this is just trying to get things filled out, and I'll improve the quality of what's hanging as I go, but the uh, werewolf was one of my better ones, not the best, but one of my better ones that I picked up from uh, the Halloween event. Had to have one, so there it is. I wanted to have an albino in here, and I forgot to taxidermy that one and let the timer expire on it, so meh. Got, um, that one wasn't bad, it wasn't great. I just wanted one to put in here and see where it would go. Um, kind of proud of this guy. Pretty good score. It's weird as sometimes when I look at it, the horns are going through the, um, uh, the brick. Sometimes they're not. But they curve back whenever, I was looking at the animal whenever he was walking around. The arch of the horns went all the way back past his back, and we're sticking into his back. So I did him a favor by killing him. But if you look, I mean, that was a really, really good scoring um, um, Ibex there. Then we'll we'll come back to that wall in just a second. I had uh, this elk right over here on this wall, but the horns were too tall. I was kind of proud of this one. Again, probably not my overall best, but it was pretty good. Pretty good score. Buffalo, not bad. Or bison. Sorry, I'm just going to call it buffalo. Just because I had to have one. Not the greatest, but meh. Something to fill the wall. Now this one, reindeer-wise, that was 545 points. Really good. Really good score. So, slowly filling up this one. I've got spaces for a few more things here and there. But... I wanted to have certain animals and decent animals in here. Again, it would be nice if we can come over here and sit down. Really? I can hear an animal calling while I'm inside here. Red deer. Well, you know, I don't want to disappoint him and not kill him, you know. Weapons of choice for this hunt. 4570 lever action because it has that awesome almost beefalo uh, Bart looking emblem on the uh, side of the receiver. Gotta have it. Can't really see it, but I've got the uh, the shorter range scope on it right now, and I brought the 5.5 by 20 the longer range scope just in case. And the ever trusty the snake bite. Single pin. Actually, last night while hunting with my brother, I was able to um, harvest several bison, actually, with um, with this bow. Single shots. And two, two of them while charging. One of them charged and kind of ran into a terrain. But one of them was charging directly for me. And when it died, a single shot with the arrow... And it was from here to that, that tree right here in front of me away. It was really close range. And I packed along a 357 Magnum, uh, just in case. 
I feel like roe deer if I just feel froggy and want to pop one with that. Look at my roe deer collar. Hog squealer. Red deer. I brought my jackrabbit collar and pheasant collar. I was really thinking about bringing the um, the 22 air rifle for pheasants, just for the heck of it. I figured, you know what, I'm trying to get back and doing more, more archery hunts and more traditional stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've got the, uh, the recurve, but I'm still not confident in my abilities yet with it. Um, that's where I saw him right here. Yeah, maybe not. So yeah, we're going to start straight up at 9 o'clock, but um, I had someone to do. I mean, something to do that had me preoccupied. It was a rather tender situation. All right, enough in innuendos there. Uh, let's find this red deer. It was not much farther ahead. Once I spot him, I'll see if I'm going to use the 4570. I brought it specifically for the red deer because, well, you know, I like the rifle and I haven't hunted with it much. And figured it's good enough for the red deer and for the hogs. Figured it might be interesting to try it with the, uh, the short scope. Kind of like it. The color is bright enough to where I can distinguish it between the, uh, the grass without it being too bad. Yep, oh shit, I'm walking right past you. Um, I'm gonna call for him one more time. Number five. I see you, big boy. A clear shot without spooking them. And stupid's in the way here. Damn it. Should probably use the bow. Yep, yeah, spooked him. Yep. I lost out on that chance. And a golden opportunity and just couldn't get the scope settled in fast enough. Got my scope on him and then was holding the key to hold my breath. And was waiting for it to stop moving. And right before it spooked, I probably could have stood up, but it wouldn't have been as good of a, a stable shot. And since I haven't hunted with this rifle much, it's probably still level one. I don't know if I've killed anything at all with it. Eh, eh, maybe. Well, I think I might have taken a bear with it. To me, I mean, this is based off of, like, the uh, the Ruger, like, Alaskan, and a couple different variations. I have to have a little bit more volume. We've got the heater running in the room. Yesterday I was in here sweating and had all the fans turned on. And tonight it's cold. Got to love South Carolina. I hear the gooseys. I've had some pretty good multiplayer goose hunts. 
in front of with about three or four other people here on this map and my goose setup. Got a half spread and blind setup. Works pretty good. You know, I'm going in the opposite direction of where I want to go. Gotten distracted by a red deer. So I'm going to start heading back towards my objective of that first tower. And I know how it usually goes with that tower is by the time I get there, I've already heard at least one hog squeal. I get up into the tower and there's three, four, or five of them out in the field. I take a shot and, well, there goes the use of the tower for anything. I use the towers pretty often. Um, being that this is, I mean, it's not 100% realistic, but it's more realistic than, say, Call of the Wild or some of the other hunting games that are out there. I, I like Call of the Wild, I just haven't played it in a while. It's had some really good updates from what I understand. I'll pick up this track here, and what I can do is call the um, red deer if I don't see any pigs in that field. So I'll call the red deer and because I know it's going the other direction but I, I try not to especially if I'm already on that animal I try not to pass up a track because you can always use tracking points. The more points you get the, the more information you get from those little domes on the ground. Oh, another objective. Finish your coffee before it gets cold. I do like about cold weather is I mean I drink coffee all year round I mean hell, I drink coffee right before I go to bed but winter time I can get away with um, a little bit more foofy coffees like uh, I've got some peppermint mocha creamer in right now quite tasty so I know how it goes though I'll get over here and I'll get to this tower and there'll be pigs all over the field, which is okay. I mean, not complaining, but like I said, some of the time, whatever I'm doing a hunt, I'll actually have a sandwich or soup or something to eat in front of me so I can go over, plop my butt on the tower and actually wait for a decent kill. You know, it's one thing just if you're out here farming for GM and you're just spanking anything to get you GM in, in the pocket. Now, that's not a bad thing, but Try to be a bit more conscious trying to pick up some more trophies. You know, on, on this map, in the wooded areas like this, yeah, I'm going to crouch walk. It keeps the sound low, and it's not a big deal. But on the Arctic map with the bison and moose and doll sheep, um, Sitka, deer, polar bear, Snowshoe Rabbits and Arctic Fox is on that map. Uh, on that one, if you're going after the moose and the bison, hell, you can walk. You, normal, you can run. I haven't seen where I can pull the jeep out yet. But, you know, still, usually there's enough animals to keep you busy if you're on a decent hunt. And, uh, hell, you can spot them way before you can spook them. So you can walk normal or you can sprint around the map. Just definitely need to invest in um, some cold weather clothing, because you will freeze. Uh, my brother and I did a good hunt last night on there, and uh, we both got about a dozen animals apiece. Decent stuff, some. And um, we decided we'd finish it off and head up north and go look for some polar bars and some uh, fox and hare. And I spotted a polar bear out on the ice pack. Laid out in the prone, got a good clean shot. It stopped. So as soon as it, it stopped, and yep, I hear you, pheasant. I'll be coming after your butt here soon. So as soon as it stopped, I had a nice, well aimed, perfectly placed shot, maybe 600 feet out. And yeah, I think I see a pig in the field. Um, it took off running. And I'm like, okay, what the hell? He should have dropped on the spot. It was a perfect shoulder hit. Should have been a pastor on both lungs, potentially heart and lungs. 
but it just took off running. Okay, so I get out there on the ice pack, and I'm looking around. No blood. Plenty of tracks in one concentrated area, but no blood, so I couldn't even put the dog on it. So I was getting PO'd, and I said to hell with it. I'm just going to head back. Screw it. If I hit it, there's no blood. Can't find it. It must have hit the water and gone, because it went out of draw range after I hit it. Or after I fired the shot, at least. And, um... I just got PO'd, so I said the hell with it. Yep. Piggy right here in the field. Male, so we're gonna put the smack down. I swear I thought I saw something over there, though. Five. It's still kind of dark. I thought my glasses were still on. Um, yeah, that's going to be good enough. I think he might be hurt. off the rounds and let's go ahead and dot them and then keep looking around guys I know there's a bunch of pheasant out here too now it may end up being comical trying to use a bow for uh, pheasant but because sometimes you can see them good sometimes you can't oh hello um, thousand feet out. Let's uh, change scopes. And let's just see here. That's a facing away shot, which I don't normally like. Okay, I saw that one hit the ground in front of him. And I was aiming a little high and a thousand feet. Um, if he was right or she is right here, I should have been aiming about right there. Just above that first big line. And I did not compensate for the um, the range and the, the drop. So that's going to be a miss. I knew better, but last night, for some unknown reason, now I was using the Buffalo rifle, and I was using a 9.3 by 74 r over and under, and neither one of them were working with the, the Blessed Drop. They just seemed to be shooting flatter than normal on that particular map. And if I tried to aim high to compensate for those 1,000-foot shots, then I'd end up missing. And I didn't bring any of my goose calls. I don't have the lanyard. They wouldn't come down right now anyway. So there's no real point for me walking out there and checking that pig because I saw the bullet actually impact the ground right at its feet. So I know better. Now I know about where to aim at, at that range. Um, I've got a range set up on Bush Rangers, um, just north of one of the lodges, on top of one of the plateaus, and um, I've got targets set up between 250 and 1,000 feet. Body, skull, shoulder blade, neck bone, three, right lung. Damn, 771's not bad. Um, yeah, not bad. I'm not going to put him on the wall, but... That's not bad. It's actually a pretty good score. I mean, I've, I've actually done better, but that's actually not bad. All right. Where are you, Pheasant? You're right there. 
be nice also if we can carry both dogs or, you know, that's what I like about a multiplayer hunt is I can carry a scent hound and um, somebody else can carry a uh, pointer and somebody else can carry the other dog and have all three different dog types. So, was that number eight? Yeah. All right, and I didn't think about it. Is um, I do have a mission that requires me to shoot two hens that are flying, but I'm not sure if it was specific to the to a map, a certain map, or it could be anywhere. I did not think about that. Where the um the drilling rifle will be really really handy, and um, during the um. The last classic live stream. Uh, I won 500 EM, and I kind of wished I had saved it, but I ended up buying a, uh, a six pack of targets and use that to build out my range because all I had was the mat and a, a single target. Oh, you geese are going to kill me. I'm going to hear you honking, and I'm going to have to go to the other lodge and re outfit and then. Head out just for freaking geese. Alright, pheasant shoot right over this little hill right here. I'll try it with the other bow. Just see how it works. Yay, flying away. Because I'm standing up walking instead of crouching. Crouch walking is a lot quieter. So it flew over here, landed back in the same field, but... What is this, Unreal Engine 4? Cloud shifting around, the light just suddenly, the ambient lighting just changed. All right, I know that it flew to my left, but there's tracks over here. So A, always good to pick up tracks. B, that could have been a different one that flew off. And it's a roe deer, and I see a pig. God, stupid dog. Um, went down to the other field. Yeah. It, uh, the hog was walking right across here, just said. Oh. Now, it would be nice also that um, you'd be able to retrieve your arrow because it's, it's right there. And whenever I kill an animal, it's right there if I'm able to harvest them. So you'd think you could retrieve your arrow and keep using it. That's 23. Not bad for a pheasant. Now, even though the snake bite has is, is turned out to be a really, really good bow, um, it's not the quietest of the bows. And I like that single pin. I mean, even whenever I shoot a bow in real life, I only like a single pin. I know that sounds stupid. You should want, well, use the other pins for, for different ranges. I'm like, okay, well. And 99.99% .99 of the time that I'm shooting a bow, it's at a specific range that I already know, and I don't need to adjust it, and I don't need other pins, and I dial it in for what I'm shooting at, and then there you go. 
and if I'm going to hunt, then, which somebody stole my bow, but it was like, oh my god, how old would that bow be now, if I still had it? Um, yeah, I got that bow back in the early 80s, so it'd be pretty old. I probably got around 84, 85, somewhere around there. So yeah, it'd be pretty old. Um, but while working at um, one particular gun shop, we had um, an archery department, and we had um, which I would have to go in moonlight from the gun counter over to the uh, the archery uh, area. If the girl from archery wasn't there that day, I'd have to fill in for her. Where'd that pig go? And, yeah, sometimes it gets a little boring if you're just sitting over there in the archery department by yourself and there's no customers, so, you know, you, we had just a small practice range there. It wasn't, well, it wasn't but like 30 feet, maybe. Excuse me, 10 meters for you non Americans. Yeah, I thought I saw something right over there, but it's just that gaggle of branches. So, really, really close, 10 meters. I mean, it's like nothing. But that's what we had there, so. Oh, 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 oh. How the hell did it get by me? Let's actually change scopes back out. So one of the days while I was there, um, I just had a handful of arrows that I kept inside the little range. So as I'm demonstrating a bow for a customer or, you know, that kind of stuff, I already had arrows pre-cut that were universal length that would work with the draw length of the display bows that we had out. So I'd sit there and practice, you know, I'd sit there and, yeah, I'm sitting there shooting a bow at work, getting paid to play. That are a female, but I just wanted the spotting point. I'm not going to shoot female roe deer. pig when he called was right over here in the road. So as I'm sitting there shooting, um, getting some pretty nice tight groups. And then again, it is relatively short range. And um, I mean, I'm absolutely just casual at this point. I'm not trying to worry about, oh, well, having the perfect shooting stance and everything else. I'm leaning up with my back against the wall and my foot propped up and I'm just shooting away. And um what I'm really paying attention as I'm shooting is I'm, you know, I'm trying to get you know decent groupings and everything, but one of the arrows I'm shooting carbon fiber um, now. It's not like the good old days where you had a choice of still using wood and maybe those fancy aluminum arrows. Uh, so I'm shooting all carbon arrows and you just target points and pull the Robin Hood. Shoved the uh, that was a pheasant. Um, shoves an arrow about six or seven inches into the back of another carbon arrow. And I'm thinking, oh shit, now i got to replace the freaking arrow. I'm going to have to pay for this and um, that kind of crap. And um, the, the girl that normally works archery was had just come in and she heard it. You could tell the difference whenever the arrow actually hits the, um, you know, the, the target backstop. It's like a you know, wall we had back there, and when you shove it into the back of another arrow, she goes, I heard that. Did you just do what I thought you did? I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, my God, it's amazing. It's cool. And she's showing it to every freaking body and went and showed it to the freaking boss and everything, and they're all happy and excited, and they mounted it up on the freaking wall and shit, and here I am thinking I'm going to have to pay for another arrow. <laughs> 
So it stay, it's still hanging up on the wall. I, I went by that store uh, about a month and a half ago when a boy came up from Florida so we can go do some shooting. And um, that arrow was still hanging up. I am by no means an expert with a, a bow. I love shooting archery, but... Oh, damn it. Just pick up my damn coffee. And that's another another male behind me where I just came from and one was squealing right over freaking here. So there's one over here and there's one over here. So And look, no, it's not even the same one because that's, you know, it was a, a new squeal. Yeah, at some point I'm going to get another bow. There's after mine was stolen, I just never replaced it, and kind of missed shooting it. Now I went over to the the new store. I was there from at that one store from day one to help build that store. All right, piggy, I see you now. Then went over and built the other store. All right, shithead, you stay still. And those should have been the females, three of them. Not going to press my luck. <laughs> um, I need to set up another backstop. I've, I've got, uh, this is what really sad is, um, last year, yeah, I know it's almost next year, but last year, um, I took some of the money that, uh, I get tips and donations for, for doing these, um, live streams and streaming games and so forth, <coughs> donations and tips, <coughs> and, um, yeah, I took about 150-ish out and picked up an air rifle that I can use in the backyard and picked up a Beeman QB-78. It's nothing special. Drum roll, please. 769. It's about the same as the last one. All right, and those were females that ran off, the, the three of them. And they were kind of scattered, but... Yeah, I bought a uh, scope out to go with it. I bought CO2s. This is CO2-powered um, single-shot bolt-action air rifle. And, um, I bought a uh, one-piece scope mount against better judgment. I don't normally like one-piece mounts. That's like a tactical mount, maybe. Um, and the only scope... You know, the rifle was about 100 bucks, and if you're buying a, a big box of CO2s and some pellets and the scope mount and everything, I spent about 150 bucks. And then um, <laughs> I've got a... Uh, couple scopes laying around. I'm like, okay, well, I've got a 30 millimeter tube and a one inch tube. I'm gonna screw it. I'll, I'll throw, well, a 30 millimeter tube scope that I've got laying around is kind of acting up a little bit. It won't matter so much on a CO2 air gun, but if it was a Springer air gun, no way in hell I'd put it on there. Because Springer uh, air rifles will destroy a scope. Yeah, I'd put it on a 44 Magnum before I'd put it on there. And the only other one-inch scope that I had was a pistol scope. And I was like, well, shit on it. And The only other scope I've got sitting here that I can put on there is this damn $400 uh, loophole scope. Uh, VX3 series scope. So I've got a $100 air rifle with a $400 scope sitting on top of it. 
So I take it out of the box. I take off the iron sights because they were getting in the way of the scope mounts and the scope. And naturally, the the one piece scope mount is problematic and can't mount the freaking scope correctly to match where I want my eye relief to set. So the rifle's been sitting for over a year now, and I haven't even fired the damn thing. All right, section of road. I thought it might have been another road here. Kind of a shame. Have any kind of weapon and not to shoot it. Yes, I hear you, pheasants. Guess while I'm scouting for more piggies, I can shoot some more uh, pheasant. Well, I got arrows. I mean, I can always go back to the tower and call that red deer back, too. Alright, we'll stand up. I ain't worried about these pheasants. Um... You know, Unreal Engine 4, I did a tutorial about eight months ago or so on doing binoculars with adjustable zoom using the uh, the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Mind the, the mask that I applied to the screen had this, this same kind of look, but I didn't think about feathering the edges. Probably a good idea to go back. I mean, I still got the original graphic that I used on my uh, Discord channel, but I'll go back and redo it and just kind of I don't know, use like the the eraser with a just kind of work around the edge a little I mean I use GIMP it's not like I'm using any high end professional software, I mean GIMP works it does a good job uh, I mean hell for I've, just, I've never really been able to adapt to um, Photoshop Excuse me. Excuse me. My, I, I've got my hands off the mouse and keyboard. You want to tell me what the hell's going on here? <sighs> that was weird. I'm stuck in strafing mode. <laughs> yeah, pretty much have, have more geese. Pretty much quit working on my game for a while, kind of clear my head a little bit, and um, still tweaking, refining my simple multiplayer Steam template, which you know I've been using it for a couple of years now, and it works, and I've got it updated for the latest version of Unreal Engine 4. I mean, all it really does is gives you a main menu with simple options, single player, multiplayer, and if you click, and well, of course you got an exit button, and then if you click on the multiplayer button, it expands out and gives you the option of either hosting a game or to search for a game, and if you search for a game, it'll search for 10 seconds and it'll tell you what's there or it'll fail and just show nothing, but if it does find a game, it shows you the name of the game and the ping to that game. Which I still need to remove the ping because it is using a developer app ID, so it doesn't it doesn't give you the accurate ping. It's hard to explain why, but essentially because it's you don't own that that app ID. I think it's like 418 because it is that developer app ID. It won't correctly connect to the Steam servers and back to the host of the game. Not a big deal. I just need to admit that from one of the widgets. Actually, pick a direction. Let's go due north from here. And kind of work the fields going north. Then we'll cross the river and, and kind of head back. But yeah, with the, uh, the simple multiplayer Steam template, it's one of the few things that I actually have developed myself to sell to other people and because it does use a third-party 
plug-in for the software, the Epic Marketplace won't sell it. For, it won't let me sell it. But if I make it to where it doesn't use that plug-in, you don't get some of the other cool stuff that it does, like show you the actual host name of the game, and some of the features just won't work without that plug-in. So, you know, I could rewrite it and just make a simple, bland, anybody can make it thing, or keep it the way it is and just sell it outright on PayPal. And hey, you want it? Okay, give me twenty bucks on PayPal, and, and I'll just uh, give you a link to my Google Drive account, and you can download it from there. It's worth it because if you don't know how to do it. <laughs> It saves you an ass load of time trying to figure it out. It's easy to adapt. Um, but what it does, it allows you to log in. Well, it, it checks your your Steam username and avatar, puts that into the game in the usable section. And then um, allows you to host a game that your friends can find and if you've already built the game and you just don't know how to do the, the multiplayer networking stuff it's a quick cheap easy utility you just add a couple files and bang you're done and now you have multiplayer capabilities to your game as long as you built everything else correctly for multiplayer I don't even want to get back into multiplayer replication right now That's what I was talking about in the lodge of um, having the ability it would be nice to have the ability to sit down in the chair in your lodge and if you have friends over inside your lodge checking it out they could sit down and I know it can be done it's been done in many many games but after going through and doing a tutorial on it and actually getting it properly replicated I know myself and a couple other people were having a hell of a time trying to get the damn thing to work. And it turns out it wasn't anything that we were doing wrong. It was the actual animation itself that was screwed up. The uh, the root of the animation wasn't in the correct place. So whenever you, you tell your character to sit down, sometimes they're sitting on top of the chair, they're sitting in the chair, they're sitting a few feet in front of it. And, you know, just It never really seemed to work correctly. No matter how you change the uh, the locations and everything else, it just didn't want to work. And I just happened to see in the um, the animation itself, uh, just something dawned on me. I see a pheasant. To, to check the animation, and I did, and I found that and fixed it, and it works now. But it was such a pain in the ass just to get the multiplayer replication for a damn simple thing of sitting in a chair because I already had other things working well with like um, an emote system where you can pull up a, uh, a menu and select an emote and set that as your default emote and then just every time you hit another key it'll just play that emote like doing sit ups or push ups or damn he went all the way over there Okay, well, we know where that piggy is, so. I lost. There he is. It's a female, but. Just in case I see a male pheasant. And I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a long day. Um, if female pheasants actually give points or not. So I know that I, I need two flying pheasant hens. But I believe it has to be with a shotgun or a side by side shotgun. And I did not bring that. So, no matter what I shoot out here, it's not going to count towards that mission. The last group that we saw, the, the female flew off, the male stood. The female's like right over in here. Yep, yeah, right there. See ya. All right, let's get back to the piggy. More important. Five? Yeah. All right. 
it was just up ahead, just below where these 90 degree bends are in the road. Alright, you guys call it. Rifle or bow? Forty-five seventy lever action or snake bite. Rifle, I can pick him off at a better distance. Bow, I'm gonna have to stalk. Stalk and call. All right, there's two hogs there. appropriate range there. I don't see tusks. So I'm stinking that one's a female. There's another one to her right. Chilling out right there. Alright, y'all let me know in chat. What do you want to see? Bow or rifle? Because I'll take your female. I don't care. They both pay GMs, but I'd rather take a male. So odd last night, some of the the female bison we were shooting were paying out more GM wise than the uh, the males were. Yeah, we were just kind of killing them all, trying long shots. Yeah, I went archery for a little while and was using the uh, the snake bite for for bison. Was surprised how well it worked. <laughs> All right, that one's IDing as a female. One ten to two, one ten to two ten. That's kind of a broad range on weight, but you're giving me the info on this one. The one that was calling was a male. Crouch. I mean, I don't care. I'll shoot one of those females, but the one that was squealing was a male. And it was about the same area. Right there. Let's see, 80 to 170. So he's smaller than she is. Yes. Don't shake your head, no. 110 to 210. What about the other one over here? Shut the hell up, dog. Lost your damn mind. Well, I'm going to spank the male with the 4570. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Tempting, but not going to do it. Walk right in front of me when I'm getting ready to pull the trigger, you sad sack of shit. <laughs> I mean, even though the females weighed more, I, I tend to, to try to lean towards shooting the males. Real life on, on hogs, you know, if you're out in Texas where it's a major issue, uh, you pretty much, if it, it's got four legs, a pig nose, and squeals, put a bullet in it. <clears throat> Babies, and mamas, and it's pest elimination. If I'm not mistaken, though, they're not boar. They're actually, um, see, this is going to be a lower score. 601, yeah. The last two males were in the mid 700 range, score wise.
So I'll crouch and I'll ease up towards this hill and um, squeal for me. Squeal like a piggy. See if we can't stock up on one of these females and make a shish kebab. Toss an arrow in her ass. Or lungs, heart, maybe. Uh, see the river. Not typically a problem, but when you see a river, depending on the AI behavior and the depth of the water, whether it's quote unquote cross or, or not, roe deer, roe deer, um, what will happen is either of two things. They're going to just go right across, no matter how deep it is, or they're going to go to the water's edge and either run left or right. And it's not usual, like if they're going in this direction, they're going to keep going this way, they may actually spin back and go this way, to the right. So, there's no 100% guarantee, but there's a higher probability if they're coming at an angle like this, they're going to veer off that direction. Um... a hay bale and the problem with the water also is I cannot cross here if I try to go in it'll just stop me right here at the water edge I can't go anymore and I'm gonna get back out of it and stupid ass dog needs to get out of it too because the new mechanics on water will actually has an increased spook range so if you walk in the water it's gonna be noisy even if you're crouching than it used to be. And that's relatively a recent thing. Um, yeah, I've seen in the past where the animals are supposed to be able to swim, but more often than not, I've actually seen them go in submarine mode and just walk down the frickin' bottom. And I, I look over and I see just a tip of an antler sticking out of the water or I look and just something catch my eye and I think it's a fish and it's a deer or a bear or whatever just taking a sweet ass time just walking right through the water so let's continue to up in here and then we'll switch over I'm gonna go ahead and stand back up Yes, Geesey, I hear you. I mean, I could always just haul butt back down. Don't know why my link is not putting up um, thumbnail for in Discord for uh, the stream. The changes in, in Streamlabs and YouTube and everything else is just... Everything changed recently, and... It takes sometimes 45 seconds for a stream to start. What was it? The pig tracks? Well, let me get the track. Thank you. Going that way. Not worried about it. And I'll go to YouTube. And the way I used to, to do my streams is I'll go to YouTube and then go to the control panel. Well, YouTube has their new fancy control panel that sucks. And you can't just go straight to your control panel. You have to go to your control panel, and then you have to select on the lower left-hand corner, Classic. So then I get the Classic to come up, and then I can see, okay, here's live streaming. So I can push that, and I start putting in all my settings for the title, the game, the description, the thumbnail, then all the data that I need to set up for the stream. So I've always done it that way. And then... Anything out here? What is that over there? Yep. Pig right there. Road deer female right there. So now that's fine. But now YouTube also came up with their new um, thing where you have to. Oh, there's another pig there. So I got two hoggies. That's a male. I can see the tusks on that one. 
Um, yeah, you have to verify that your video is safe for children or not. And you know what I say? Screw the children. Um, one pig there, one pig there. Yeah. And I just select no. <laughs> okay, broad spectrum. No across the board. None of my videos are suitable for children. They may be. They may not be. I put a disclaimer in the uh, description saying, basically, caution... Um, this can this video will probably not not may but will probably contain foul language <laughs> you know, just being honest I might let an f-bomb slip or damn or shit or hell or something minor but I try to try to limit my f-bombs you know try to be almost civilized I'm not but you know try keep my eyes this way. I don't care about the roe deer, but, yep, that's what I'm looking for, is more piggies. That looks like a male. And I lost sight of the other one. Maybe the same one. But you would think this would be okay. I've got all my settings I put directly into YouTube. And now they want this control panel, new type, new additional control panel. Well, I don't want that. I just want to do what I do, load my software, hit start stream, and start streaming. It's nice and simple. And I thought I saw something over there too. Um, but no, now um, Streamlabs. So they're going to add a feature in that brings up this information that where you can input that information for your stream now, but not all of it. You can't change your thumbnail. YouTube's new control panel lets you change the thumbnail, but I don't need to because I've already set it in the other place. Damn, that's three hogs there. Potentially four. Got three right here, and then not sure about that, but... This is the point where we decide, do we sit still and call, or stalk closer? Do a combination of both. What scope do I have? I got a short one. Let's swap scopes again. And give me a little bit more of a long range shot. One of the things that I'm always doing whenever I'm in this game hunting, and I try to let it become a habit, and I see a lot of people. Now, if you're a sniper and you're trying to avoid contact and get into a secure location, you're not going to walk on top of the ridge. You're going to be down away from the ridge line, so you're not casting a profile. Okay? Makes sense, right? But when you're in a hunting game, in particular, you always want the highest possible ground you can have so you have better visibility. Better shot. And one of the things I'm always telling people to hunt with, ABL, Alpha Bravo Lima. Or always be looking. Yep, I hear you. That's the female squealing right now. And crap, she's going to be on this ridge line now. I don't want you. I want the male. So what am I always looking for? I'm always looking for a spot that's flat with no vegetation. So that if I need to, I can drop into the prone position and get set up to make a shot. This is not an opportune place because A, there's a bitch in my way. Definition of bitch is a female dog, by the way. Um, but it's looking up a hill and not down a hill. Alright, I see a hog right there. You are
or female. I don't want you. I like that color though. And what are you? There's another one. There's two of them right there. And toe. And there's another one right there. Damn. I got four hogs right here. Female. Of course, the, the cool looking fur is going to be the females. So, you two. Well, let's look at your weight. 70 to 170. And. 20 to 120. You're the male, though, aren't you? Yes, you are. Damn it, where'd he go? Mm, they're getting too close. That's not him. I don't care about the idea on that. He should be like right over in here now. Look at all that friggin' scope sway. Yes, that is the male right there. But there was another male in that group. There was four of them there. Two male, two female. Alright. Five shots left in that box. So, any luck, I can get up here. Oh, I'll pick this one up for sure. He's dead. But any luck, I should be able to get that other male to call. Yeah. Body, skull, neck bone one, neck bone two, shoulder blade, left lung. I didn't look at the score. What was the score? Uh, shit. I'm doing a single player game. If I'm doing a multiplayer game, I can hit the F3 key and, and actually see what my highest CSS score was, total CSS, things like that. Which is part of the coolness of with the shooting range. It also keeps score for the shooting range. So what I want to do is... And yes, this game is free to download, free to play. So anybody can download it, anybody can play, anybody can join. No problem. I'll set up a secure game with a password, host one on Bush Rangers. Now, here's here's the situation though. Is with a fresh new noob account whenever you you've never played before you sign up for an account you download it you launch the game through steam you know you can get it right there on steam hopefully this is the mail there's these four pigs were traveling together in the same pack and you know, trotting this is the fleeing track over here you start off with very limited kit. Nope, that is not the fleeing track that I want. Uh, you start off with a 243 caliber bolt action rifle, which is the the cool new synthetic one, uh, the one that the ones that I have. I'll explain why I have multiple to the same rifle is um, uh, is the wood stocked version of the 243. That's the fleeing track. That's the one I want. Um, used to be that to hunt different animals, you had you, you had a, your rifle, and then they added a shotgun, a single barrel, 12 gauge, and you get a doe bleat, and that's it. You know, basic clothing. That's it. Nothing special. And you were only allowed to hunt like one or two animals on one map. So you had to have a, uh, uh, like a hunting license. You had to pay for, um, like an entire year. You can get a year pass or a weekend pass or a week pass or whatever, but you had to buy that separately. Um, okay. 
but if you bought the retail box set, you go to like Walmart or EB Games or or wherever Babbage's, whatever, wherever you buy your games in like stores and stuff, if those still exist. Um, so with those, you got um, like a one-year pass, and in with your box set to make it worth spending the 25 bucks on it where if you actually pay for the season pass it was like 30 bucks or something like that so every year this game came out in like 2009 so every year I kept getting a new hello new season pass and don't know why but it, it would give you the 243 rifle a doe bleed <laughs> And so forth, and then after they added the shotgun in, it, so then I started getting a 243, a shotgun, and a, a doe bleat every time I renew my, my pass. So I have like five 243s, five doe bleats, and like two or three of the uh, single barrel 12 gauge shotguns. But anyway, back with um, the 243 and the single barrel shotgun. The shotgun, you get buckshot, slugs, and birdshot. Allowing you to, to to now the way the game is to be able to um shit he's gonna run to the river and now you can hunt anything but you can't take a two forty three and shoot a moose it's not an ethical kill because you know you wouldn't want to do that in real life anyway but you know it's like shooting a a moose with a twenty two you have to have the right weapon. And the easiest way to find out is once you get the game, go to the store inside the launcher and select your rifle. And you'll see that, like, one owned or owned one or whatever. So you know that that's your rifle. And then click on it and it'll show a list of everything you can hunt. There'll be a green check mark next to everything that you can kill with that, that rifle. There's only a limited number of things you can actually hunt with a 243. So that kind of limits what you can do. Now, you can either purchase EM from the store, which is like a premium currency, and use that premium currency to then purchase new weapons, new clothing, more ammo, tents, all kind of cool stuff. But if you're poor and you can't afford to throw lots and lots of money at a game, even though it's worth it, I've, I've spent quite a bit of money with this game because it's worth it. I am i don't like hunting games. But you're playing a hunting game right now. Yeah, I know. Um, give me this one. This is not my usual taste in games. It's very slow paced. It is not, uh, you know, your typical first person or a third person shooter. It's uh, wasn't my my thing. So why have I been playing it for so many years? <laughs> I just enjoy it. It's relaxing, low stress at times. Well, how can this game get stressful? Um. Yeah, when you start getting more and more bold and you decide that uh, you're going to go after bison with a bow. It's ethical, so you can do it. The bow, it, the bows in, in general, and almost all of the crossbows, not the crossbow pistol, but all the, the regular crossbows, reverse draw crossbows and all the other bows, compound bows and so forth, pretty much they're ethical on everything in the game except for werewolf. And the werewolves are only available during Halloween. So, not something you're going to encounter all the time. But, the bow is also quiet. So, if you're trying to take multiple animals out of a herd, or one animal at a time out of a herd, then you can usually stalk in um, using this snake bite. 
the center pin. You, you've only got one pin. That pin is set at, for me, 100 feet. That's, that's where it actually appears to be absolutely solid, is at 100 feet. And it's good for anything closer than 100 feet. Anything farther than 100 feet, you're going to have to aim a little bit higher to compensate for the arrow dropping. Uh, this pig should be close. Ooh. Damn it. Run, 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 run. You're a female anyway, I don't care. It just seems that roe deer bucks. So friggin' hard to find. No shortage of the females. So yeah, um, this pig should be close. I'm going to work my way to this ridge in front of me and then be able to look down into that field and hopefully it'll be in that field. But anyway, with whenever you do find, like, say, white-tailed deer, mule deer, black-tailed deer, uh, coyotes, or whatever that, that's ethical for you to hunt with that 243 rifle, you can go out there and do well. However, you can also have a single barrel shotgun. And I've done one hunt before on a live stream that I, I call it my newbie hunt. And what I did was I took out that single barrel shotgun and the 243. And I went out and I harvested uh, black bear. I harvested moose, elk, um, some big game. The bigger game like that, you can use the slugs. Medium sized game, you can use buckshot. Birds and rabbits, you can use birdshot. So with those two weapons, you can harvest almost everything in the game. <coughs> Not water buffalo, bison, uh, bunting. I see piggies in the field. Moving pretty quick. Yeah. Are you fleeing? Where are you going to go? Huh? I see your friend to your... Oh, there's three of them to the left. When you kill an animal and you harvest it, that one on the left looks like the bigger of the four. Toss it between that one and that one, but they're still steady moving. So I think what I'll do is go this way, and then as I go this way, I can be aiming back to the left so I don't take a chance of spooking them, trying to cross the field, and you know, try to make that shot going across over here. I'll actually go over there, like towards that rock, and then work my way back around and try to get them as they go into that field over there. As you kill these animals, ethical kills on ethical animals. Shooting a, a white-tailed deer doe, female deer, or that roe deer that just ran off to the right, female. You get zero points and zero GM. But you kill these pigs, and I might get anywhere from 4 to 40 or more, GM, which is the game money instead of the, the normal premium currency. The so EM is real money currency. GM is game money. That's the way, just think of GM as game money. Now you can save up that GM and then be able to use that to purchase the, uh, the in-game gear, guns, ammo, clothing, Dogs, calls, callers, uh, scent, all the, the, everything in the game can be bought with either premium currency or game money, either way. Now, it might be 500 for EM, but it might be 10,000 on GM, which makes sense. I mean, if you're not going to fork out the cash, then you're going to end up spending double the, the numeric amount in the game currency. So just get out, find a spot you like, 
find something you want to hunt that you can hunt ethically and with the equipment that you have and then decide do I want to buy EM and you should because it is free to play free to download and that kind of stuff and yeah there's a bunch of us we've probably between all the regular players who have been here over the years from back whenever it was a, a, a paid game and pay for the seasons and that kind of stuff yeah I'm sure we probably paid for the development of the game but it's oddly enough I think I've spent just about as much since the game became free to play as I have in the past whenever I was having to pay every year doesn't make sense but it's a good business uh, model to use. You're going to get more people, but then again, more people draws more interest. And we're talking about a game that's 10 years old, but it's still going because now with the new business model of being free to play, people are getting in here and realizing, well, either A, this is stupid, I can't kill anything with these two stupid guns, or B, man, this is really cool. And they hunt what they they can, and realize, well, dang, I'd really like to be able to shoot a moose a little bit farther out, or, you know, oh, that bow looks really cool, or that rifle looks pretty awesome. You know, you look at me, I want to play cowboy. I, I do Wild West themed hunts, where I'm in my full trapper gear and I look like a buffalo skinner. I've got the buffalo rifle, lever action 30/30 or 30 out six. Um, 45 Colt pistol, or I do a, a military hunt, and I'm out there with the um, the closest I've got to. Uh, and I see stuff out in that field over there to the left. Um, I've got a 1911, even though it's a long slide 10 millimeter, but I still I have a 1911. Um, I have the Mosin Nagant, which is 7.62 by 54R. I've got the uh, Lee Enfield, which is 303 caliber. Damn, I see them pigs way over there, still moving. So I'm going to have to cross this field and get to the berm right across here, because I see four pigs over there. So they, they've already moved in. Well, still, this is a better approach anyway, instead of following directly on their tail. Um, I've also got the 1903 Springfield, which is 30 out 6. And yes, that rat that just ran across in front of me, you can shoot them. I've shot them with the 22, I've shot them with a the pistol, um, that kind of stuff. You can kill the rats. Um, is that something there? No, just a rock. Alright, so we need to keep walking towards probably right there. Oh, let's see, what other military rifles? I got the Enfield, the Gant, oh, the K98 Mauser. And so I'll do a military hunt, and I'll carry like the Mauser and the Mosin, or the Enfield and the Springfield. Uh, I'll carry the 1911. If I want to carry a shotgun that's closely related to military, I've got the uh, the Primal 12 gauge pump that I can put the the, uh, the big red dot uh, aim point on it. More like a pro point than an aim point. Y'all don't know what a uh, pro point scope is. Billy, 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 rest his soul. Um, good friend of the family he had a business it was called the mount man and he primarily just he would go to gun shows all around southeast uh selling scope mounts and pro point optics that's what he did he's retired he had his his retirement coming in and he liked guns, he liked shooting, he liked being around the people and working the gun shows, and just enjoyed it. He'd always wear goofy hats like reindeer or a Santa hat, you know, reindeer antlers and, you know, elf hats and junk like that. And he just was a friendly, happy-going, happy-go-lucky person. And, you know, he'd say, you know, hey, why don't you come work the shows with me? And, yeah, no problem. You know, the, the missus at the time didn't care, and 
we could always use the extra money and hell I love going and playing at the gun shows because I'd always carry something to, to swap or trade or sell or whatever and go around and talk to the other vendors and that kind of stuff and it's like yeah I can put a scope on anything and that was the thing is I could mount a scope on any weapon you've got didn't matter bring me any rifle or pistol or shotgun I can put a scope on it because I had all the freaking types of mounts that you can think of right there on it's all we sold was scope mounts and, and the pro point uh, red dot optics that looks like the male. Big pig. Bastards are steady walking away from me. I'm guessing... Shit. Best option is to walk to this hill right over here, I guess. I'll probably head to here where that big tree is and walk this way a little bit. Mm. That hill kind of goes up there. Y'all are making me work way too hard for your little ass. So yeah, I've always had that running challenge. And some of the guys and other vendors would be like smart asses and just joking around and stuff. I bet y'all find something you can't put a scope on. And the running deal was if I would take a pro point scope one, two, three hundred dollar scope, but usually around two hundred dollar scope, and a little red dot optic. And if I could, if you bring me something and tell me that, you know, it, it, it's part of the bed, if I can put mount that to that rifle or pistol or shotgun, then you have to buy the scope. But if I can't, I'll give you the scope for free, and you put it on whatever the hell you want. So I was bound to determine I was never going to lose, and I never did lose. So it was like these vendors would come over and like, "Ha, put a scope on this," and we're talking without actually having to drill and tap and that kind of stuff. We're talking about just being able to apply the scope to existing hardware without modifying the weapon. And I had barrel clamps and stuff like that too that were used for mounting optics directly on the barrel which it works not the best option in the world but it works so worst case scenario I had I had something that I could put on there ah oh, shit there, that's the bridge no wonder they were funneling in this way did they cross the bridge or they hit the river I'm going to guess they hit the river they went to the other side of the bridge. Oh, this side, but this side of the river and this side of the bridge. Yep. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But I also used to do, um, with another company, would do um, restoration and restoration parts of USGI weapons. M1 Garand, Garand, however you wish to pronounce it. Oh, I hear you, piggy. That's the male squealing. See? I was right. They're still on this side of the river. Um, M14s, M1As, 1911s, M1 carbines, USGI rifles. Old mil you know, World War II era stuff, mostly. And, you know, AR-15 parts back whenever, before AR-15s were truly cool, where everybody has one. Uh, damn, I see the pigs moving. I want to get right over here and try to get a flat spot. And then I'm going to go prone and start calling. Alright, I see you. I see two. But I could take any, at the time, any beat-ass frickin' M1 Garand or M14 or 1911 and restore it back to original issue condition. Let's we'll see if I can get on this rock. 
there in the shop I had um, books and databases and everything else that uh, had all of the Shh, you're not going to let me get on the rock are you let me on the rock thank you I'm going to call to see if I can get them motivated I would put the serial number into the software or you know through the, the book or whatever else I had to and I could find that's the female don't walk away from me and it would tell me what parts needed to be there and well okay I know it's a trigger is a trigger right but like on the M1 Garand and M1 Carbines and stuff like that and the L3 Springfields they actually had a revision number so it would be like 19-2 or or 4-7 or whatever there would be a, a, a an actual revision number for the part so the, the software would actually tell me which revision was needed for that's gonna be my mail right there what parts should have been there whenever it was originally built and when the revisions were were viable or shake your head no at me oh it is so tempting to try to pop them on the run but I know me I've seen me do it wound them and they'll just haul ass and take me an hour to fucking track them down And I'd tell people whatever they, you know, especially like vendors and stuff like that at the shows. They're like, I'm like, okay, what level of rebuild do you want? And you know, I could basically just do a field service, or would headspace the barrel, um, check the trigger, check the action, uh, just make sure it's cr good and serviceable and a good shootable rifle. All right, what's my score? Yeah. 560. But that's 30 GM in the pocket, though. I'll take it. Uh, so the females here just hit the river. Chances are they ran. That's a male on the other side of the river. And I think I see him. So with basic field service you know there's really no parts involved it's just an inspection you know it's really cheap you know like 50 bucks or something like that just to cover a little bit of time head spacing check the sights zero it if you needed or whatever just basic service it was like 40 50 bucks nothing major but then you could do restoration work damn it I want on that rock you right there dog I will put a 4570 slug in your face god damn it um devs Let's have it where um, when player goes prone, dog goes prone. Hey, level 2 on 4570. Now I'm going to have to go to the bridge and walk around. It's so freaking annoying. And I'm just going to sprint. When these dogs just walk in front of you as you're getting ready to shoot. And I don't want to have to stop, turn around, and whistle at the dog three feet from me. And do the little hand motion for him to lay down. Because in my mind, if I'm whistling, that's going to spook the animal that I'm trying to shoot. So. Yeah, no bueno. So yeah, the, like the next level upgrade would be maybe go through and, and put the correct parts on there. Parts that have already been reconditioned. 
And then you could also do like, okay, I want my rifle to look like it's brand new, never been issued with a fresh, brand new barrel because there were reproduction barrels available. There still are, but um, and there's reproduction reproduction stocks if you want to go that way, but they won't have the, the correct cartouche and that kind of stuff. So it's up to you if you want it to be correctly restored and then what level restoration you want to where it's brand new with all the correct parts on it that it would have had whenever it left the factory or it could be reconditioned and I had um, in the parkourizing process could actually take and adjust the finish it would still get a good thorough parkourizing but the color would turn because whenever these rifles were stored in Cosmoline, which is like a a really strong grease that was used to prevent the the guns from you know rifles, pistols, whatever artillery to keep the stuff from rusting whenever they were stored, it worked pretty good overall. All right, pigs are on here somewhere. Right over there. But what happened over time is the parkerized finish would go from a deep, rich, almost black color, like a dark, dark gray, almost full black, and it would get kind of a greenish color. Well, let's go ahead and get the track. So to make it look like that, one of the chemical baths that I have or had back back then. 568. These last few have been really crappy. I mean, it's still 30 more GM for the pocket, but... And bacon in the freezer. And bacon for my belly. Well, the, the chemical solution that I would submerge these things into in a hot bath was orange. <laughs> but it would change the color of the parkerized finish from dark gray black to a, a green patina to make it look like it had been sitting packed in cosmoline for 40, 50, 60 years since World War II, you know? But if you wanted a factory original restoration, then I tell these guys at the shows, you better write down your serial number. I mean, I'm going to give you a receipt anyway, which is going to have the serial number on it. But make sure you write down the serial number so you know what it is. Because when you get it back, you're not going to recognize it. And I've taken some ratty ass guns that the only usable part on it was the freaking serial numbered receiver. <laughs> and they needed barrels, the triggers were worn out, or just the wrong part number you know, revision numbers, what have you, and if you wanted to keep it all the same, I could just take your parts and recondition them and go from there. Um, we had a, a stock guy, our wood guy. He was also a, a jeweler and could do engraving and dog gets out of the way from me. Don't give me that shit. Um, but he was damn good with wood, too. If there was any intricate, tiny pieces, parts, or whatever, yeah, he's good with that. Because, I mean, he did watch repair, jewelry stuff, and engraving, and just just also really good with wood. Um, we could take the stock and steam it and use the heat and different chemicals to try to revitalize the wood, get all the oils and greases out. The stocks will look black. They'll just turn black over time from years and years of service. God knows how many grunts um, taking that M1 Grand and dragging it through the mud and then scrubbing it clean and just throwing a ton of oil on the damn thing. Well, the oil soaks into the frickin' wood. Well, we're across the river over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's house we go. Let's, um, just head back to the lodge and finish off this one. 
finish off my Wednesday stream. Yeah, I've been going for over an hour and a half anyway, so. Um, looks like I just walk over here to the, to the windmill. Just to show what they look like and then get out of here. But yeah, you could use um, a steam iron, like a regular iron, and a, a damp cloth. Not a damn cloth, but a damp, p p damp cloth. And use a regular iron like you use in clothing. And it creates steam, which loosens up the pores of the wood and will help raise some of the dents. But it also helps to kind of get that oil to kind of flow back out too. And other stuff you can do. It just makes the wood look so much better whenever you get all that oil, soaked in oil out of it. Um, Alright, yeah, I see the... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sprint. There's the, the windmill right up ahead. You can get some dents out, but you can't always get all of them out. And little tricks like... Uh, if you've got a crack section of the stock, you know, or a gouge, we'll say, not a, a crack, because cracks require a whole lot more work. That's female, right over there. And we'll stop sprinting and we'll just walk now, just in case we can get one more piggy. We'll say, if you've got a gouge in your stock, um, it's not like you just want to throw some Bondo on there and paint over it because you're, you're staining the wood and you want the wood color and everything to match so it sounds a little sketch whenever I explain it but one of the things you can do is take the like on the M1 Garands and Carbines and they all have these metal butt plates on them and underneath there is usually just like a hole because with the military butt stocks a lot of them had a hinged door that create a little pocket inside of the stock where you can keep cleaning gear. Well, you could take the butt plate off and take off just a little bit of wood from right there. You can sand it off or whatever, and um, you just want the sawdust. So if you're, you sand in that area a little bit, it, you're not really going to notice it because you're going to restain that anyway to protect it, but you're getting some of that same wood back as sawdust or sanding dust. You can mix that with um, either a super glue or, a, or epoxy. Um, super glue works pretty good for that, but either or. And um, you mix the basically the sawdust in with the. Um, yeah, I hear you with the super glue and now you just uh, once that area is clean where the gouge is in the stock you can fill that in with that mixture of sawdust and or the, the fine sanding dust and the super glue or epoxy and just build it up a little bit taller than the outside areas of the wood let it cure really well and then you can file and sand it back down and then when you stain it, it's going to look the same color as the rest of the wood because it is the same wood. Eh. So there's little tricks you can do to to clean them up and fix them up, even if they got. If you want to keep that original stock, and if you're doing a full restoration, you really, if possible, want to keep the original stock instead of new wood. New wood looks beautiful, but the original stocks are going to have a stamping on the wood, and yes. You can buy those stamps and f take a brand new stock and put that stamp on it yourself, but that's to me is creating a forgery. That's that I, I can't do that. I mean, yeah, it would look correct, but I would know, even if you didn't care, the customer didn't care, I would know that that wasn't the original stock, and it would bug, bug me that. I've just created a forgery, even though the rest of the rifle is correct. But say your stock was broken or incorrect. Roe deer. Roe 
easier. All right, I'm not worried about these guys. We're going to take a look at the uh, the windmill, like I said. Right over here. And I'm going to get on out of here. I probably could still, still hunt, but I'm going to do other stuff as well. Like maybe eat. All right, so I'm probably not going to get any hunting in real life this year. Um, I keep seeing the shadow of the uh, the windmill on the ground and think it's an animal running. But, yeah, you can see the, the windmill up here. I've actually done simple tutorials for Unreal Engine 4 to create things like this. Not just, okay, I can make the blade spin, but actually to have um, random speeds. So this one may be going really, really slow. The one over here might be going really, really fast. That kind of stuff. Now, I know that you cannot enter these, but it would be cool as hell. Yes, Piggy, I know you're over there. If you could actually go over here, and I know that in a couple different spots, whenever you, like in a tunnel, certain tunnel on a certain map, I won't say which one, you start to enter the tunnel, and it'll give you the ability to press the E key, and when you do it, it teleports you to the other end of the tunnel. I won't say which map and which tunnel, so you have to figure it out yourself. But if you can do that, then why not let us have the ability to walk over here and try to enter this door at the bottom of the tower or climb the ladder like you're you know, if you climb the ladder to get into a tripod you go to enter and then pff, you teleport into it instead of actually having the climbing animations and that kind of stuff I'm not so much worried about well it'll look better if you actually climbed and have the animations and yes I have climbing animations a lot kind of stuff too but and I can do it but I'm okay with just walking up to the door you can't jump, so you can't jump on top of there. There's no jump button. But be able to press the E key at the door and teleport you to the top of the frickin' um, windmill. I think that would be cool as hell to, to get up there and hunt. Because <laughs> my blind is right over here next to one, but I know this area is not bad for red deer. Eh, okay for red road here as well. But this field right here for me has always just been dead. I mean absolutely dead. I very seldom see any pigs, very seldom see any red deer, roe deer, anything. The last four or five hunts, this field has resulted in nothing. This field here always get a pig. This field here always get a pig. Always get pigs over here. But yeah. Just nothing here. I've been all over this map, but like I said, this has just been a dead zone. No spawns. But this little area right in here, where I've got the um, my duck blind and or my duck blind, well, you know, waterfowl blind, and um, Canadian geese decoys. Uh, that area is really good, well, for geese and. It's decent for red deer, but you only ever see one, maybe two. Uh, if you stay there long enough and call while you're hunting geese, they will come to you. Um, I've seen fox there as well, roe deer. I've killed pigs from that blind, but nothing over here. I've killed some red deer in here. Uh, we had... The one earlier was actually in this area right in here. So I'm, I'm going to have to go back and do some more red deer hunting in this section. I don't know if I've ever been to that. I know I've been up here, and I've been across this little marsh area there. Um... Yeah, that one right there, I know I've killed a few pigs right here. And in this field here. I've actually shot geese on the ground in 
either one of these two fields here, which is unusual. Don't normally do that. But, all right, we're going to complete this hunt. Thank you, everybody, for stopping in, and we will see you next time.